Yo, what's up? Ballista, Ballistic Beats, BallisticProductions.com Back with another video today. Today I'm gonna be going over my uh, computer bill specifically for music production. Of course it can do and handle a lot more than music production, but the purposes that I started with the base of it was for music production. All right, so when trying to get a computer for uh, music production, it's kind of hard to find exactly what you need because there's so many different specs and processors and RAM and all this different lingo that everybody doesn't really understand what's going on. Um, so I'm gonna try to make it a little bit more clear to help just the average music producer figure out what to look for when you're trying to build a music production computer from scratch. It's actually not as hard as it sounds. It sounds intimidating, but um, I think watching a video or two, like anybody can really get, not anybody. <laughs> Most people can uh, follow the steps and connect the dots and get it together. Like long as you know which what parts you need, um, is pretty much straightforward as far as putting it together. So for my specific computer build, I went with the uh, NZXT H510 case. I really like the case because it matches my studio with the uh, white and black theme that I got going on. And it's kind of sleek, like the glass panel on the side, so you can see everything in there. I'm not like too focused on all the LEDs and RGB lights and all that right now because uh, I really just wanted something to perform well. It does have some lights in there on some of the parts that I bought, but later on I probably will go in and uh, actually add some lights, some uh, customizable RGBs and things like that. But um, right now it's, it's really just for making beats and I also do edit these videos and things like that and do a little bit of work for people on the side so that is my purposes for it but um yeah so i chose the nzxt case because it's the nice sleek modern look um but the biggest part that you will need to focus on is your processor and of course we all know that i7 i7 is always like put out there as like the king of processors it still is a super great processor and that's what i went with actually i went with the i7 9700k that processor is eight cores and me coming from two cores in my 2015 macbook that is a huge difference like night and day i wouldn't even say night and day it's like like night and next week it's like out of there it's, <laughs> it's gone but um so the performance is there like the cpu is going to be the main thing that you want to look for when you are trying to find something for music production i've said it in another video regarding laptops but the um i5 would probably get you by now because they have like six cores and even an eight core uh, i5 also and the i5s for desktops is actually gonna be a lot better than an i5 on a laptop. An i5 on a desktop, in a lot of cases, would actually beat out an i7 on a laptop, and a lot of people really don't understand that. So when you go to build a desktop, you're just gonna get a lot more power and a lot more bang for your buck because you don't even have to go for the super high-end stuff. It's like, you can just go and get an i5 and it's gonna, it's probably gonna get you most of the way where you wanna be. Um, a step over the processor that I got, I got the i7-9700K again. Uh, they have an i9-9900K and that one actually is eight cores and eight threads, which are kind of like cores, but not quite as powerful. So it, it does have that hyper thread in there. So I really didn't just, it was like another $200 to go that step up. And the i7 is so far ahead of what I had before. Um, it just really didn't make sense for me right now. And I just put that money 
into other areas like a graphics card speaking of a graphics card if you're building your computer specifically for music you actually do not need to get a external graphics card or a dedicated graphics card with your build you can do that later if you want to like get more into like a uh, gaming or creative type stuff video editing a bunch of the other stuff but um just that processor especially a i7 like nowadays you can do a lot of photo editing and light video editing on just the processor that graphics card is only gonna render video better and stuff like that or so it's really not a point to do it especially for music uh even for video in adobe premiere uh if you have the graphics card it could speed up the rendering process but most of the actual editing comes off of the cpu alone so you can really get by with just the cpu there too you just may have to wait a little bit longer while the video renders but back to the music the next thing i got was uh for the heat sink i got the cooler master uh hyper 212 and it actually has a red led on it uh it's pretty cool if you want to take it a step further you can get a, a water cool system and that actually can replace the fan and it'll be of course a lot quieter keeps the cpu a lot cooler and it'll allow you to overclock the cpu to get like a little bit more performance out of it too i was tempted to do that i actually almost did it like this week but as of right now I really don't need much more power than I have. Like I'm nowhere near to even hitting half of what it can do. So I'm really not about to just waste money right now. Um, just trying to build out the ultimate computer. Basically, I just needed the ultimate computer for what I need it to do. And it does that right now. Um, for RAM, I just went with the 16 gigs of uh, Crucial Ballistics ballistics so i got the crucial ballistics uh 2666 ram you can get like 3000 or 3200 or whatever it's a little bit faster but 2666 ddr4 is a lot faster than a lot of ram from even just a few years ago so it's great it does what i need it to do and that's what matters. Uh, SSDs, I actually got a lot of storage in there. That actually took up the price for me. I have uh, two M.2 like little tiny SSDs in there. Um, one of them, my main one that I use for the C drive is one terabyte. I don't know why I went with the one terabyte for the C drive. I just wanted to make sure that none of my stuff actually uh, like used up all the space like installing all applications and stuff it's pretty much all i use it for so it has a lot of space left right now and plenty of expandability for me to install what i need later on so i'm gonna just keep that open for right now i also just had a, a 256 gig stick of m.2 left over from when i updated my razor blade still so uh i just since i just had it laying around i put that in the secondary slot on this computer and i use that for things that i'm working on right now uh whether music or uh, videos or photos or whatever like since it's only 256 i dump everything on there as soon as i finish and i work off of it when it's done i'll render it out and put it into like a secondary drive or a backup drive. I also had a terabyte 2.5 inch SSD from Western Digital and I put that in and that is where I store all of my Steam folder for Omnisphere and Keyscape, all of my sounds, my drums, uh, Nexus expansions, contact libraries, all my native instruments, complete 12 stuff, ultimate. It's is crazy it's actually almost full but i don't plan on getting a lot of other huge things like that if i do then i'll just like move it over to a two terabyte drive or whatnot in the future so yeah basically uh you're gonna need that cpu the hard drives a heat sink some ram and you're also gonna need a power supply i went with a 650 watt power supply and what all of this is actually going to connect to is your motherboard. I went with the Z390 Designer board from Gigabyte. It is not the cheapest motherboard, but it has everything that I needed, especially for music. Like 
I recommend this for music producers, period. Especially if you use like different interfaces and hard drives and things like that. One of the main reasons are the in and outs on the back. This board actually had uh, three PCIe slots, uh, two Thunderbolt ports on the back. And that's the main reason I got it. I had uh, a Thunderbolt Apollo already from when I had my MacBook. Then I had a MSI laptop and other computers that didn't have Thunderbolt. So I actually had my Apollo sitting to the side collecting dust because it didn't have Thunderbolt. And building a computer, there are limited motherboards that actually have Thunderbolt on them. So uh, you can probably find a motherboard for around $100 and it'll be decent. But this one was actually like $250, $270. At the time that I got it, uh, they fluctuate, but it's still gonna be around 250 to 270. I say, uh, if you're gonna get a computer, the best way to go about it, if you don't do a lot of moving around, if you like to be in your space, if you have a dedicated setup at home and that's where you spend most of your time, you'll get a lot more bang for your buck by just getting the parts, building it yourself, and putting it together you'll actually feel better about it too maybe that's a personal thing but you'll just feel more proud of it or whatever and, and you can actually update it and upgrade it in the future too instead of just having to buy a whole new laptop for over a thousand dollars every time it gets outdated like if a newer better cpu comes out pop the cpu out put the new one in and you're good to go yeah that's my recommendation if you haven't already please make sure to subscribe it helps a lot please hit the subscribe button hit like if you got any questions about anything let me know in the comment i'm placing the links for everything i discussed in the description below so uh if you have any questions regarding recent prices things like that that's where you'll find it until next time though um holler at me follow me on my socials uh if you have any questions i'm willing to answer like just let me know bye